In tonight's final, it's India versus Britain, as two outstanding chefs battle it out for the title of the F-Word's best local restaurant. Their challenge is to come up with three stunning dishes made with Janet Street Porter's delicious pork, beef and chicken. My first finalist tonight is Lasanne from Birmingham. When I first walked in the door at Lasanne, I could sense straight away that it was something special. Nice atmosphere. It was cool, contemporary and stylish. We were the first restaurant to break away from the mainstream and I'll offer alternatives to your Baltis and your tikka masalas. That's exquisitely presented. Finesse. Actor, how are you? I'm very well, Chef. In the kitchen, I discovered head chef Akhtar swimming against the tide, refusing to serve up familiar Indian crowd pleasers like chicken tikka masala. What's the ambition, Lasan? What is it? It's not food for uh, people who haven't got an educated palate. It is a very sophisticated cuisine. There's something very special about Lasan's dishes, and they serve me some of the best food I've tasted outside India. The merg mahani and the butter chicken, absolutely delicious, melt in your mouth and, yeah, authentic. But my winner tonight must also be committed to delivering the very best service to its customers. So for the semi-finals, Lasan had to undergo three grueling tests. First up, I sent in secret diners. Is it possible to change it? It's a bit too hot for me, sorry. Oh, thank you. Attentive service. Yeah, good. And then 30 f -word diners visited Lasan, putting Akhtar's kitchen under immense pressure. Akhtar? Yeah? How much longer? Can you give me a time? That could be eight to ten minutes at least. Uh, ten minutes. At least. Akhtar, he's got to get a grip. There's a customer sat upstairs, minus the main course, which is not good enough. Akhtar's very confident and sometimes he can be a bit too cocky for his own good. How'd you uh, find the mutton, chef? I thought the food was outstanding. You're gonna forget Doesn't about the masala? Need... Can I finish? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I love his ingenuity and his fearless determination to take risks with his cooking. Pedigree and saffron for the potatoes and cauliflower. No, the saffron's actually in the, uh, the, the gravy. In the gravy? Yeah, that's right. In the third test at my flagship restaurant at Royal Hostel Road, Akhtar revealed his more sensitive side. We've always been knocked for our approach by people within our industry for, you know, pushing the barrier. Wow, absolutely phenomenal. You taste it and it, it blows your mind away. My other finalist tonight couldn't be more different. The pheasant from rural Cambridgeshire. As soon as I set foot in this rustic restaurant, I was completely seduced by the warm atmosphere that husband and wife team Jay and Taffeta have created. Let me get you a menu. Thank you very much. Very cosy. Those ceilings, beautiful building from the outside. Thatch roof and feels and looks and smells British. The pheasant is a slice of paradise in the heart of the English countryside. We have customers that sort of will just turn up and throw a brace of pigeon down, or the other day we had a guy who'd gone shooting for some mallard. We trade off, we might cook them a duck supper, and uh, that's payment for it, really. They just don't want to see anything wasted. The pheasant serves wonderful British food, and head chef Jay is so devoted to the local produce, he gets his ingredients from the farm next door. We've got the cows and, you know, we've got pigs and all that sort of stuff. We cook everything of the animal, especially like all the offal. You know, I love offal, so why not use it? Partridge, you know, tough bird to cook. They go dry within seconds, so uh, yeah, that was delicious. My team of secret diners confirmed that the pheasant was just as good when I wasn't there. Would you prefer mass? Oh, no. Oh, that's really kind of you. Yeah, good. And when I turned up with my coachload of F-word diners, they coped brilliantly. The service is friendly, attentive again, and everyone's little busybodies running around, making sure of bread, butter, water, and constantly observing, which is always nice. Jay's a very controlling chef, very hands-on, but everything functions around him. He's at the sort of central point on the hot plate and everything comes up to him, so he misses nothing. Everything's scrutinised, overseen, tasted as well, which is a good sign. When things do go wrong, however, Jay's head can drop. It's fucking hard. It's fucking bullshit. Hey, do you want soggy? Yeah. Just sat too long or...? Rested like that, needed to be on a rack. Yeah. Fucking one day, that fucking matters, and we can't do it fucking properly. But in the semi-final at Royal Hospital Road, Jay proved once again what a fantastic chef he is. Does it work? My God, that's amazing. 
Now Lassan and the Pheasant face one last test. Tonight, they'll be batting out for the title of the F-Word's best local restaurant. Service is about to start, and this is going to be the fight of their lives. I will have the final say on who wins. So, who's it going to be? It's too close to call. Only one can win. This yeah. needs to be the best service of your lives. Tonight, we're going to be crowning the F-Word's best local restaurant. It's Indian versus British. In tonight's final, the pheasant from Cambridgeshire and Lasanne from Birmingham are battling it out in the F-Word restaurant in their toughest challenge yet. They're cooking their own recipes using beef, pork and chicken that Janet Street Porter has provided from her farm in Yorkshire. Who will I crown the F-Word's best local restaurant? Wow. Right. First of all, welcome back. What an amazing journey it's been for all four of you to be here in the final. Really well done. Right, Jay, how are you feeling? Anxious. Welcome very back. Ready to go, thank you. Actor, how are you feeling? Very good, Chef. Um, um, yeah, I'm ready to go. Gentlemen, one of you, OK, is going to win the title of the F Word's best local restaurant tonight. There's one shot at this, no rehearsal. Personally, the journey has been phenomenal. I am so glad that both restaurants are back here tonight. Why? Because you both deserve heavily to be here. I've packed the dining room purposely, OK, with food writers, critics from all over the country. They are a tough bunch. Just have a look at them. Look at their faces. This is the final. Their comments are absolutely critical, but I will be deciding who is the winner. Now, make it your night, OK? Each restaurant is going to make 25 portions of their starter. Then you're each going to do 50 portions of your unique main course and then back to 25 portions of dessert each, yes? So, really make it work, yes? Yeah. Let's yes. go. Yep. Excellent. OK, let's stand first off. Yeah, four covers away, table one. Four chicken, yeah, four beef, four dessert. No answer. Chicken. Yes, Chef. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. When you give me that level of confidence, shout. Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. I turn my back, I can continue. When it's silent, you haven't got it. You know the score, you've been I'm here. There. Let's start again. I'll order four covers, table one, yes? Lassan, here we go. First ticket, four chicken, four beef, four dessert. Yes, Chef. Lassan. Yes, Chef. Thank you. Welcome back. Both brigades are cooking with animals from Janet's farm. Here's Lassan's starter with street porter chicken. Actar's been on an amazing journey during this competition. In the semi-final, the cocky, arrogant facade finally cracked. I was so disappointed with the way things went. I thought, you know, I'd lost it and that was it. But then when Chef turned around and he said, I've made it through to the finals with my team, you know, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, once again, I broke into uh, tears. <laughs> so I won't be able to walk into a local anymore without having the piss taken out of me. order for the kimurk. Lassan's starter tonight is chicken tandoori masala with mint chutney. First, Akhtar rubs the chicken with garlic and a ginger paste. We're trying to get as much flavour into uh, the chicken as possible. Next, he makes the marinade. Most marinades always start off with mustard oil, so here it goes. Next, he adds ground cumin, tandoori masala, gaha masala, ground fennel seeds and white pepper. Then he adds coriander, coats the chicken and leaves it to marinade. I think this marinade is definitely going to work wonders for uh, Janet's chicken. Actor then fries the marinated chicken to seal it. Just trying to get a bit of colour on it and finishes cooking in a hot oven for about eight minutes. He serves with a salad in a coriander dressing and mint chutney. This is typical Akhtar. He's fantastic at using great presentation to take Indian food to another level. Chicken tandoori masala with mint chutney, served. Now, even from here, yeah, that smells delicious. I, mean, I hope it cook. works for you tonight, you know that. Hey, uh, guys, taste, 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 yes? Asan. Everything yes, you sir. do, you taste, yes, yeah? Nice. Did you go foraging for them? Our man did. Mm -hmm. He goes foraging for us. Got Had a nice phone call from him at midnight last night. Um, Saying what? Good news or bad yeah. news? Telling he... me to tell you that he got stung picking them by wild bees. Shit, he got stung by wild bees at midnight? <laughs> what the fuck's been doing wild midnight. bees <laughs> in the middle of winter? <laughs> Was he somewhere he shouldn't have been? I think he might have no? been. Yeah. The pheasant are using Janet's pork for their starter. Head chef Jay has upped his game at each stage of the competition. He likes to use every part of the animal so for his starter, he's going to use the pig's head to make a brawn. Quite an ambitious dish. It's really important not to waste, waste the thing. So you've, you've got to be inventive in how you're going to scrape the bones down to make a terrine or, or whatever. You know, and that's what we practice here. The pheasant is. But 
life is all about. We do put everything into it, you know. I want to be the best. I want that accolade of being Gordon Ramsay's best local restaurant. Check on one prawn. Check on one prawn. The pheasant starter tonight is brawn with crisp pork belly. To make the brawn, Jay cooks the pig's head with vegetables, herbs, spices, and pig trotters. Brawn is a traditional English coarse pate. Once cooked, he removes all the flesh from the bones along with some of the skin. You'll be surprised the amount of meat that there is actually within the head. See, that's, that's the cheek. You know, there. Lovely little nugget of meat. To flavour the brawn, he adds parsley, green peppercorns, and mixed spices. Jay uses half the brawn to make the carpaccio. The other half is breaded and deep fried. Jay's brawn carpaccio is served with hard boiled egg, baby leeks, and a chopped apple salad. Finally, the dish is finished with a slice of fried pork belly. Brawn with crisp pork belly, served. Uh, tell me about the recipe. Well, brawn is brawn. Yeah. Uh, the reason for the carpaccio, just to sort of lose the ick factor yep. for the ladies, really. I mean, it's a very robust. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's what, you yeah, know, made it's the, what the pub does. You know, they're all foodies. They'll, if they, even if they don't like the idea of brawn, they'll try it. And I'm sure yeah. if they try it, they'll like it. Uh -huh. Okay, guys, well done. Joe, they look fantastic. You happy with those? Yes, chef. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they look amazing. Yeah, yeah. really, really good. Okay, now we're doing five. Service, please go. Five on. next. Yeah, yeah, first table. Let's go. Why are you slicing it upside down? Coloured side, presentation side down. Yeah, presentation no, side. No, no, no. The, the other way. You, you slice from the presentation side. Have you not been watching me? Act up. Jay's got a table out already, but uh, it's not a race, yes. This is not, not a race, race yes. Yeah? It's all about getting it right. Come on, son. Please. No problem. I've got to put it up there this way now. Act up. Happy man. I'm very happy with yeah, that, happy, chef. Yeah, happy, yes. Good. They look very nice. They smell delicious, by the way. Thank you yeah, very much. Absolutely delicious. Love the colours. Service, please. Wait. Nice and gentle on the plates. Wait. Four on table one, please, yeah? Are oh, they got a six stand by, yeah? Yes, chef. Actually, they look fantastic. Love the smell. The chicken dish was really close to being a great dish, but it just wasn't quite there. In the spicing, there was just too much chilli, and therefore they lost the, uh, the harmony of the dish. I think the chicken was excellent. Um, it was really, really moist, really juicy and tender, and I think um, it's fantastic because it's on the bone, and that's really where the flavour comes from. I love the mint and coriander chutney. Jay, are you a big lover of Indian food? It's my favourite cuisine. Oh, Is it really? Yeah, I love, I love it. Won't be Indian. tonight if you lose. Mm. Oh. We're getting, it's promised me a free meal. <laughs> I thought the pork was really, it melted in the mouth, it was cooked to perfection, the crackling was lovely, and they were against the tartness of the apples and the sweetness of the leeks, it was lovely. The carpaccio was quite fatty, the small crispy squares were quite fatty. Fat done very well, but also, you know, there's a little bit too much of it. Really vibrant start in there. Jay's got off to a very confident, composed, energetic start. Keeping himself to himself, but focusing on his flavours. That dish is very, very ambitious. Akhtar, however, has sort of... He's come in almost lacking confidence, which is a big change around for him. But more importantly, he started to communicate to his sous chef like he cares, which is a really positive sign. Who's in the lead right now? This is neck and neck. Welcome to you both. You look amazing. Thank huh? you. So smart. You look beautiful. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm fine. Now, Trevor, he seems to eat, drink, sleep, breathe food. Is he a workaholic? He is, yeah, very much so. In fact, uh, I don't know how he does it, but he does it well. And mm -hmm. I think that's largely supported by the amount of passion he has for food yeah. and what he does. Yeah. Jabba's making money out of him, so he's not particularly bothered about him being a workaholic. <laughs> Do you have any concerns about the level of commitment that guy puts into his cooking? There is concerns. I always ask him to lighten up and, you know, ease up. But I think that's his passion, mm -hmm. and that's where you get the best of actor. But mm -hmm. I've, out of all this, Gordon, I have to thank you. He has changed. <laughs> he's, he's simmered down. He's calmed down. I think he's more... Um, he takes on, you know, mm -hmm. positive criticism. Good luck. Thank yeah, you. Really good to see you both. Thank you. Enjoy your course. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. My yeah. goodness me, how are you feeling? I'm feeling on centre hooks, yeah. nervous, incredibly excited, yeah. everything. He is very calm, yet again in there. What is it with this guy that cooks in that unassuming, calm style? What is it? I have no idea, but I have to say, he is looking incredibly calm today. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's enjoying yeah. it today, yeah. which is another thing. Yeah. Now, what's he been like over the last seven days to deal with? A pain in the ass. <laughs> Bless him. Would you love him more if he wins? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really enjoy your main courses. Um, and yeah, you both look great. You. And well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Tonight, I'm deciding the winner. I'm going to be judging Jane Actar's dishes by my highest standards. 
and every dish they cook needs to do justice to Janet's fantastic meat. Janet, go good on. to see you, my darling. Now, uh, great job. Thank yes, you. Really good job. The mangalitsa pig is quite rare, having had the raw barkshas and, yeah, was excited about it. I've never tasted anything so Well, it was exquisite. a real talking point in the valley because yeah. obviously they'd never seen these pigs in no. our part of North Yorkshire. No. Loads of people came to see them and when I showed them in the show, they were really, really popular. Yeah. And they had great personalities. They yeah. really did. Really? What were the individual characters like? A bit evil. Evil? Serious? So you got on well? Yes, I did. I bonded with them and they ran around very, very fast and they're like rolling in mud. They were uh, very entertaining. Yeah. Talk to me about the chickens. Waste of time. Oh, no, come on. Be a little right. more sympathetic than that. I'd rather talk to my cabbages than talk to a the... chicken. Or you. I... <laughs> <laughs> the meat tastes great, yeah. but as an experience, yeah. they're not that rewarding. No, plain, no. Um, beef, extraordinary stuff. Dense, delicious and quite a unique flavour. I think that is because the animals run around a lot more. They're, they've got their little yep. short legs, but they're agile. Yep. It was interesting in our valley yep. because you could see the other cattle in the other fields sure. munching away. Yep. And my Dexters were much more lively. Um, again, another amazing job. Yeah. yeah. From the chickens, the pork, and now the beef. Thank you. It was really, really worthwhile. Yep. And I'm glad you enjoyed it because there would have been nothing worse than to go through all that nightmare no. and come up with meat yep. that was average. Yep. But it was Having good. two restaurants in the final, you've made their life a lot easier producing fantastic meat like that. Thank you so much. I've got yes, a present quickly. for you. you got, oh, really? This is a rug what? for you uh, <laughs> from one of the Dexters. Seriously? It's a rug type sex on, basically, Gordon. So <laughs> it is the okay. kind of rug that people put Honestly, in front of the fire. In the history of my cooking career, I never thought I'd touch Janice Street Porter's rug. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a kiss. Thank you, my darling. Well done. Uh, brilliant. Uh, absolutely amazing. Job well done. An exquisite produce. Uh, ah. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Janice Street Porter. <laughs> amazing meat. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Mm, well done. And thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> right. Can't wait to taste the pheasant starter. It looks fantastic, like the little mangalitsa pigs been running around in the back garden. Uh, Phenomenal. Very chefy. Now, the taste. Flavour's amazing. You can really identify that pig is unique. The brawn, delicious. And you've got the crispness of the deep-fried little beignets. Very earthy, very dense and slightly sweet. It needed that mustard mayonnaise to really sort of bring it together. Yeah, they've done that mangalitsa. Very proud. Delicious. Really good. I want to see what Actars is like. Now, he's got the chicken drum, marinated. Smells amazing. And the breast, sort of char-grilled. I honestly never thought I'd see chicken tikka from Actar. Mm. That's delicious. I mean, really good. It's the kind of dish I'd expect Akhtar to come up with because it's, it, it's packed with flavour. It's very mellow, very cleverly put together, and more importantly, it has great finesse from start to finish. Look at both dishes. Uh, this is a tough one because that is Jay through and through, and this chicken here is Akhtar through and through. Which one do I prefer? It's hard to call. I like them both. If I had to choose one, I'd go for Akhtar's chicken. We've got 50 food critics out there. I mean, you get one or two at the restaurant and you just how happen to find that and that's it. You know, you're, you're all over the place and, you know, making sure everything's OK, double-checking everything, triple-checking everything. I am a bit nervous, but fingers crossed we'll, we'll do it. Every dish went out, uh, looked pretty. Let's just hope they want to try something different. Brawn, pig's head, it's quite not controversial, but hopefully they'll be brave. If the diners don't like the starters, they don't have to pay. But it's still only a guide for me. OK, before we get the results, OK, from the diners, I want to let you all know they are an indication. But at the end of the day, it's my decision. Uh, Jay, how are you feeling? There's a lot of ladies in the audience. Uh-huh. So, um, maybe it doesn't appeal to every lady, yeah. but, you know... Do you not like ladies? I know they don't like pork, but... Oh, you don't like head. pork, OK. Yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> ladies. Out of 25, how well do you think you did? I'd like to get 25, but 20 would be fine. Yeah, brilliant. Actor. You seem to have a lot more confidence this time round in terms of opening up and communicating. Where's that coming from all of a sudden? Uh, you know, through this experience, Open. obviously, I've started to uh, mm -hmm. talk more and, uh, and we're talking yeah. back to each other. So, yeah, yeah it's helped. Yeah. You were having a conversation earlier. It was all about the food. How nice is that? Great change. So, out of 25, what do you reckon? Uh, let's say 20. 20. I'm going to coffee them. Interesting. Uh, JB, these are the toughest diners we've ever had. Trust me. Serious foodies with strong opinions. OK, let's start with pheasant. The number of customers out of 25 that are happy to pay for your starter is... 15. Huh? 15. Not brilliant, but not bad. JB, what do they like? 
Um, they find it very, very well presented, great in flavors. Ten um, guests didn't enjoy yeah, why? The, the pork too fatty. fatty. Too fatty? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Of course it's fatty. Mm -hmm. Right, Lassan, the number of customers that are happy to pay for your chicken is... 22. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah, really, really good indeed. 22 out of 20. Great start. Very good start. What do they like? Chicken, very tender. Tender chicken, yeah, it's marinated. Yeah. Beautifully. Um, the, the marinade, great. Yeah. Great taste. Right, Jay, I do not want to see your head go down. Now you bounce back. 15 out of 25. Yeah, it's not a terrible score. Yeah. Yeah. So stay with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Actor, great start. Don't let that go upstairs. Yeah. You've each got 50 main courses to cook now. Yeah, make it count, yeah? Yeah. Well done, yeah? Clear down. Let's get ready for the next course. Well done. Tonight, we're going to be crowning the F-word's best local restaurant. Who's it going to be? Thousands of your favourite local restaurants were whittled down to 18. And now, there are just two fantastic finalists. <laughs> British restaurant The Pheasant from Cambridgeshire <laughs> and Indian restaurant The Sand from Birmingham. In the starter, I was impressed by Jay's ambition. The trine and pork belly both had great flavour, but the brawn carpaccio was a step too far for some diners. Actar played it safe with his starter, tandoori chicken with mint chutney. It was delicious and definitely a popular choice, but I would like to have seen something a little bit more adventurous. In the end, it's my opinion that counts tonight, and there are still two courses to go. So, if Jay wants to stay in the game, it's essential he keeps calm and confident. Yeah, that's tough, that, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, and the chef welders are kicking the balls, but you've got to stand. Stand strong up there, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? yeah. Liam, I don't want let's you dropping your head. No, no chance. chance. Yeah, let's go. Right, now both restaurants are going to cook their main course. First up, the pheasant. The pheasant's head chef, Jay, needs to stage a comeback with his main course. He loves cooking with British meat, and he's got ambitious plans for Janet's decks to beef. I like all the braising and all that sort of wintery stuff. That's the food I like cooking, and I love eating it as well. Check on one Dexter three ways. Check on one Dexter three ways, please. The pheasant's main course tonight is beef three ways, with beetroot and horseradish puree, mash and pickled red cabbage. Jay's recipe uses a combination of rib, shoulder blade and, bravely, the heart. We get the whole animal, we use the whole animal. For the shoulder blade, Jay fries chunks of beef that have been marinated in red wine with vegetables. So you want to sear these lots of colour, keeping the juices in. He then fries the beef with vegetables and bay leaves. He returns the meat to the pan and leaves it to cook slowly with red wine and veal stock. Next, Jay slices the heart and grills. Serving heart is a real risk. I think it can be delicious, but it's not to everyone's taste. The heart is served with pickled red cabbage, beetroot and horseradish puree. Big, bold flavours, the earthiness of the beetroot and then the kick-ass heat of the horseradish. Next, the rib of beef. Jay seasons the rib and fries adds butter. Yeah, I like butter, and it's going to give it a good flavour. And puts it in the oven to finish cooking. For the sauce, Jay fries finely chopped vegetables, adds fried onion, lardons, and the cooked shoulder blade and its sauce. This dish is classic Jay, sophisticated comfort food with amazing attention to detail. But it's very complicated. Makes life a bit harder, but not supposed to be easy. Finally, the mashed potatoes. Then Jay plates up. This is hearty, rustic food, but the presentation's refined. He adds the mushrooms, a chunk of beef rib, pickled red cabbage, the beef shoulder, and Jay's big gamble. Nice piece of heart. And finally, the beetroot and horseradish puree. Dex the beef three ways. Served. Uh, Jay, start off in olive oil. You're basing with the butter. Get it all nice and sealed. Yeah. And again, you seem to love that way, three ways. Well, what are you going to do with the heart? Put it in the bin? Yeah, no, not at all. A lot of chefs will take the easy route and just cook it one way. I love that level of ambition. It's not love supposed it. to be easy, is it? Uh, definitely not, no. Not to be crowned the F-word's best local restaurant. You're absolutely right. OK, Akhtar, you've got six now. After the six, you've got four, please, yeah? Yes, chef. We're good. Thank you. Here's what Lasan are cooking tonight. Akhtar has complete confidence in the modern, exciting food he serves up at Lasan. I'd say we're pioneers in that, you know, understanding Indian food for what it is. We've got food from South India, we've got food from West Bengal, North India, Kashmir and Pakistan. So we've got India on a plate, really, when you dine at Lasan. 
and masala beef, table 14. Thank you. One masala beef. Latan's main course tonight is masala beef with curried pumpkin and a cardamom scented sauce. First act our marinades, medallions of rump steak. It's a, a light tandoori style marinade, so it's, it's, it's a good all round mix. Janet's put a, a lot of care and attention into uh, rearing this wonderful meat for us, and I think it's just a befitting end for us to take as much care uh, as possible in uh, cooking it up. Next, Akhtar makes the masala sauce with green cardamoms. At Lasan, we grind all of our spices, we make all of our own paste. So that's another thing that sets us apart. To make the curried pumpkin, he heats mustard oil in a pan, adding cumin and coriander seeds. Then he puts in garlic, onion, salt, ground turmeric and chilli, along with chopped tomatoes. Akhtar adds the diced pumpkin and water. Once the pumpkin is soft, he finishes with chopped coriander. He fries the marinated beef for a couple of minutes on each side. Just before serving, he stirs in cashew nut paste. Once again, Akhtar shows real flair with his presentation. Masala beef with curried pumpkin and a cardamom scented sauce. Served. And you're using the eye of the rump? Yes, chef. Yeah. And marinated first? Yeah, marinated. It's pretty light marinade. And what have you done with the cashews? Have you dried them, toasted them? Uh, dry, toasted, and then uh, just blitzed down mm -hmm. with a, a bit of water. Fuck sake, this, man. How am I supposed to, if this F is facing the customer, am I going to put the beef behind them? Huh? This side will be. But this yeah, yeah, against the F, against the F. One o'clock, one o'clock. That's, that's not one o'clock, that's three o'clock. Do you not have a watch? Yeah, one o'clock. Yes. The masala beef I thought was fantastic. That it was a beautiful piece of beef. It just melted in the mouth. There was an explosion of taste, particular with the pumpkin. Traditionally, you don't really see beef um, in curry dishes. It was an incredibly good cut of beef and very, very well cooked. Akhtar, tonight's the night, yeah? Yes, chef. Yours looks plain and delicious. Jay's looks refined. Well, I've gone for plain and delicious because the battering you've given me over the last few months about, about garnish. <laughs> Are you feeling less confident because Jay's gone for beef three ways, not just the heart, Chef, the blade, you know, and then the rib? More, more isn't always uh, better, is it? I like they say less is more, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping on less is more today. So you're confident these two things in the bowl tonight can beat seven things on Jay's plate? Jay's got a fantastic plate. I'm, I'm not going to say um, anything other than that because it is amazing. I tasted it earlier on. I've mm -hmm. got utmost admiration for it. But I'm hoping, you know, simplicity will win through. I mean, the fact the marriage of the uh, the pumpkin with the cardamom gravy yep. and the way the beef has been uh, marinated, I'm hoping people will recognise that. It took a lot of skill and yep. uh, understanding yep. to put that together. Yep. Yeah. Jay, those steps look fantastic. They smell amazing. Yeah? Again, Very perfect. Yeah. A compliment with the beef. Okay, next four. Right. Okay, next four. Let's do it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, beautiful, my God, God. God. look at that. I could lift that now hey, and run down to Royal Hospital Road and put it out on table seven. It looks amazing. Good. Yeah, really good. The Dexter B three ways was a wonderful uh, plateful of um, ideas. I don't know if it quite came together uh, as, um, as an overall dish. Dexter three ways, the different uh, textures of beef were fabulous, full marks. I loved it. This is amazing because Jay's dish is very accomplished. A very, very difficult dish to pull off. Beef three ways, very bold move. Not everyone wants to go out, especially in the F-word dining room, and eat heart, beautifully grilled. But it's clearly obvious he's putting his heart and soul on that plate. Akhtar started with such confidence, yet there's only three things on his plate. There's amazing cashew sauce, spiced pumpkin, and then a really nice eye of rib of beef. So, quite interesting. He's calm. Very, very confident, but he's letting the food do the talking tonight, which is, which is refreshing. Gordon, what's the matter? Uh, yeah, we just found a, a piece of um, wrapping a plastic film. Who's that? What table? Table eleven. Oh, That's what, sorry. No. Not table no, eleven. No, what? That's prison. Okay. Oh shit! Shit! Ap Apologise, then, will you? Please. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Damn. 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 Leaving a piece of clean film on the plate is a sign that Jay's really feeling the pressure. I hope this is just a one-off mistake. Right, seriously excited about toasting both main courses. Let's start off with Lasan. It doesn't look like the kind of dish you'd cook normally because it's just so simple. But tonight, he's depending on the flavours. Rump done with a wonderful sauce with toasted cashew and a spiced pumpkin puree. There's only three things on the plate there, and they complement each other absolutely brilliantly well. Delicious. If I've got one complaint in how Aktar puts food together, the base of the bowl is always coated in far too much sauce. It doesn't need all that. 
great flavours, great balance. Jay's, look at it. I mean, it's beautiful, glamorous, and it oozes passion. So, the braised blade, slowly cooked and reheated in the cooking juices. Taste that one first. Mmm. Wow. Melts in your mouth. The heart. It's a shame. You go from the braised blade of Dexter's beef to the heart of beef, and it doesn't hold the same kind of quality in terms of taste. A little bit rubbery as well. What a shame. The rib. Mm. Lovely. So two out of three things work. Unfortunately, the one that doesn't grab me is the grilled heart. What a shame. Getting 50 dishes out was hard work. You know, each little piece of meat needed 100% attention. We're in the final. We wanted to win today. You know, we, we don't want second place. At the moment, it is it is very close. I look at them and, you know, find similarities between us both. Ultimately, it's going to be Chef's decision. I think it's going to be the toughest one for him. So, uh, I feel sorry for Chef. I'm deciding the winner tonight, but the diner's opinions will help me make up my mind. Right. Uh, how well do you think you did? Last time round, the F-word kitchen, 40 out of 50 paid. Tonight? Mid-40s, chef. Mid-40s? Mid-40s. 45 out of 50? I'd like to see that, yeah. I love that confidence. It's oozing back in again, isn't it? Yeah? Right, Jay? Uh, well, we need 50. Yep. Got to beat 36. Yep. From my last one. And need seven on them, so... Uh -huh. 45? Yeah. JB, please. <clears throat> Excellent, thank you. Right, that's them first, yeah? The amount of customers that are happy to pay for your main course out of 50 is 39 out of 50. Well done. Really well done. Really well done. Good. Very good indeed. Well done. 39 out of 50. Good score. Yeah. JB, what do they like? Um, they love the pumpkin. They love the pumpkin. Delicious. Spicy. Yeah. The 11 people that didn't like it. Why? Um, mainly because they said um, a bit, uh, the sauce was a bit bland. The sauce was a bit bland? Mm -hmm. Really? I thought exactly. it was delicious. Jay? Yeah. Pheasant. <coughs> oh, loved the colours. Loved it. Work of art, clearly. Now, the number of customers that are happy to pay for your main course out of 50 is... Wow. 28 out of 50. <laughs> 28 out of 50. What's all that about? Too complicated. That's 22. Yeah, as well. Yes, um, not They paying. didn't like the, the heart. They didn't like the heart? What mm. do you mean, they didn't like the heart? It was a heart salad. Yeah, but they Grilled. didn't like it. Maybe you should just put the heart in the bin, then. Yeah, and uh, the meat slightly overcooked. The meat slightly what overcooked? Meat? Which one? The, uh, the, the cooked above. I thought the dish yeah. was amazing. Loved the composition. And to have the balls to stick a heart salad on, a plate in the middle of the most amazing beef. Extraordinary, yeah? Remember one thing. Tonight, I will have the final say. I've got a lot to think about, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you still got to cook 25 desserts each. So, make them perfect, OK? Impress me, impress the diners. One final hurdle, yeah? Yeah. Well done. Clear down, let's get ready for dessert. Good. Next on tonight's menu, can the brigade hold their nerve for the final showdown? Come on, guys, ice cream's melting. Please, please, please. Ice cream's got to go on last. You can take that long, put it on the plate, yeah? And I'll be facing one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make. Who shall I crown the F-word's best local restaurant? The restaurant that has consistently delivered in every mark across the board is... Tonight is the final in our search for the F-word's best local restaurant. We had 10,000 nominations. We're down to the final two. Lassan and the Pheasant are battling it out in the final to decide the f -word's best local restaurant. I want to be first. I want the trophy. There's only one place for us, and that is winning it. I'm going to decide the winner, not just on tonight's service, but how they've performed throughout the past few weeks. So far tonight, Jay's ambitious dishes have divided diner opinion. But Akhtar is playing it safe, and his brilliance hasn't always shone through. The competition is neck and neck, and heading into dessert, there's everything to play for. This was the pheasant's strongest course in the British heat. 23 out of 25! Oh. But Lasanne have been less consistent with this course. 12 out of 25. Who's got the edge? There's only one more course before I decide the winner. Guys, final round, yes? 
Everything still, yeah, to cook for, OK? It can be won or lost on this course. Please focus. Go for it, yeah? Jay, Agtar, yeah. good luck. Let's go. Last Thank round. You. Thank you, 25 desserts. Here we go. The pheasant's head chef, Jay, had a tough time with his starter and main tonight. But he's hoping to pull things back with a French twist on a classic British apple pie. What's the point of coming second? There is no second. You know, you may as well you know, be last. It's, you, you've got you've to win. Check on one tart to tan. Check on one tart to tan, please. The pheasant dessert is tart to tan. To start, Jay peels and cores apples. The apples you want to use are Braeburn apples. They're a firmer texture. He lines the saucepan with sugar and leaves it on the heat to caramelise. You've got a knob of butter. Just going to put it in. It makes it a bit richer. It helps it get that sort of butterscotchy taste. He lays the apples in a pan and lets the caramel darken. Next, Jay rolls out puff pastry. If you roll the pastry too thin, you, get, you don't get much of a rise. Even quite fat, you're going to get a better rise. He puts the pastry lid over the apples and places the pan in a hot oven for 15 minutes. Jay serves a dessert with a dusting of icing sugar and a scoop of vanilla ice cream. The pheasant's tart to tan. Served. Jay, yeah, chef, yeah. you can pull it back on this one in terms yeah, of yeah. numbers, yeah? yeah Quite yeah. easy, yeah? Yeah. Liam. Yeah, chef. Yeah, head up. Chef. Yeah. Please be careful tipping them out in midair, yeah, guys? Yeah? Winning tonight means everything to Akhtar, and dessert is his last chance to prove himself to me. I'm just zoned into winning, and that is going to be it. It's Gordon Ramsay of choosing the best local restaurant. I mean, dream come true for me doesn't sum it up. I think that that's too blasé. And the words I can't find, but I know what it means to me, and I know how important it is to me. And everyone around me knows how important, because I've been an absolute bastard to be around for the last few months. Do we do one? One pair and a half of parcel jets. Lasanne's dessert tonight is half a parcels with strawberry coulis and vanilla ice cream. Actar cooks cassia bark, cardamom pods, and bay leaves in clarified butter. Half as a traditional North Indian, um, more so Punjabi style of uh, pudding. He then cooks grated carrot until soft. Akhtar's brilliant at reinventing classic Indian dishes, but this halva is a risk because it won't be to everyone's taste. Next, Akhtar pours in carrot juice and adds chopped cashew nuts, chopped pistachio nuts and mixes. The thing with this halva is you've got to continuously uh, stir it and keep it moving, otherwise it will catch and it will burn and that's the end of it. Then Akhtar pours in cream, milk, and finally stirs in sugar. He takes the puff pastry parcels and fills them with the halva mixture. The parcels are then wrapped in silver foil and baked in a hot oven. Then Akhtar plates up, finishing the dish with ice cream and a strawberry coulis. Halva parcels with strawberry coulis and vanilla ice cream, served. Try to put that sauce on the plate first. So the ice cream doesn't melt. I want the ice cream melting at the table, yeah? So we Not in the kitchen. On the Come on, guys, the ice cream's melting. Please, please, please. Ice cream's got to go on last. You can take that long, put it on the plate, yeah? Go. Good. Let's go. So ice cream on last, guys, yeah? Otherwise, trust me, first table, fine, but three, four tables down the line, ice cream's going to be pissing all over the plate, yeah? Now, the pheasant's tatan looks fantastic. Again, two very lucky people getting to share this. It's huge. Touch of ice cream, tatan. Mm. Wow. Simplicity at its best. Rayburn apples, puff pastry, butter, sugar. Delicious. Really nice. The important part about putting this dish together is every little bit of technical ability has to be spot on. Now, Lassans, Harvard. Classic dessert. Spiced carrot wrapped in pastry, baked in the oven. Smells very fragrant. Cardamom, cinnamon. Mm. Pastry just a little bit doughy and slightly undercooked. And it's not very sweet, but it's not very spicy, so the jury's out on that one. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't blow me away. If I had to choose between both of these desserts, there's a clear winner by a mile, and it's from the pheasant. Just when it looked like Jay had lost his confidence, he comes back with a winning dessert. But tonight, it's down to me, not the diners that choose a winner. There's so much at stake here, and I know just how much both restaurants really want this. We're not prepared to go to go second. You know, I don't want to lose. I want to go first. I don't want to go back home and tell all our staff that we lost. Uh, so every point counts, and there's only first place. We want to win it, and you know, to a certain extent, we have to win it. That's the way we've put it to ourselves. So it is important to us. Fingers crossed. The dessert scores are in. 
Tonight, I'm going to read them in private before making my decision about who deserves to win the Epworth Best Local Restaurant. So, desserts, blimey. Uh, that's a shock. Lasan, out of 25, nine customers are happy to pay. That's a big shock. I knew the carrot was lacking in spice, and it was slightly dull, pastry undercooked. However, the pheasant scored 18 out of 25. That's a phenomenal performance on dessert for them. And more importantly, did they pull it back? Yes, of course they pulled it back. This is a very close call. Lasan is everything a great local Indian should be, and there are flashes of real genius in Akhtar's cooking. The Pheasant is a fantastic local restaurant, great British food, and a wonderful atmosphere. Two very talented chefs, and based on everything I've seen and witnessed and tasted from both chefs, there is a winner. And one of them just edges it. This has been a very tough decision in the making. But I'm going to put them out of their misery and let them know. Before I give the results for desserts, yeah, tonight's overall winner does not depend entirely on the numbers from the dining room. They're a guide, clearly, influential guide, and they're going to help me decide. But I will have the final say on who wins the F-word's best local restaurant. And here's the thing. Actor, Asan, Jay, Liam. I'm taking every little ounce of detail into account. What a journey for all of us. You've done phenomenally well. Really well done. Jay, how are you feeling? Bit down. Why? Uh, well, rubbish scores. The yeah. food delivered. Yeah. I mean, really delivered. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, great textures. And visually, yeah, it had an impact. Really good. Cool. Good, thank you. Actor, <clears throat> how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good, Chef. It was a very tough challenge for us today because obviously uh, beef is not something that we're used to cooking and we've had to create something for today's final. Mm. So, and that went down very well, so that, you know, that's comforting. But... Now, here are the diner scores. <laughs> Less than the number of diners that are happy to pay for your dessert out of 25 is nine. <laughs> Desserts. Clearly, we're not your strong point. Jay, the number of diners happy to pay for your dessert out of 25, 18 out of 25. Well done. Really well done. Really well done. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really well done. So, Lassan, 70 out of 100. Well done. Yeah, really well done. That's good. Very good indeed. Jay. Out of 100, the Pheasants scored 61 out of 100. Another good score. Well done to both of you, seriously. Both restaurants did a fantastic job tonight. But who is the F-word's best local restaurant? This, gentlemen, has been a very tough decision to make, and it's not just about the scores. It's from the start to finish. Round one, secret diners, Turning up, jumping in from a coach, Royal Hostel Road, customer feedback, numbers, everything I have scrutinised. The winner of the F Word's best local restaurants is. the restaurant that has consistently delivered in every mark across the board is Lassan, well done. Pleasure having you all in the kitchen now. Get out and get yourself an amazing drink. Well done. Uh, well done. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you. It's an amazing sensation. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> It'll be like the Cheshire Cat from now on. I'm hugely proud of Jay. We're both incredibly gutted. We're stuck to what the pheasant is about. And, um, you know, we got this far. You've got to take the positives out of it, you know, I'm chuffed, I'm chuffed for the last hand.
Lasan has an exciting and creative chef in Akhtar, and the standards of excellence I've been searching for in a local restaurant. For me, that's what this extraordinary competition has been all about, finding that passion on every level. I know Akhtar feels honored to lift the trophy tonight, and I'm just as proud to name Lasan the winner.